Well, there's nothing like seeing a thesis start coming together as each step builds upon, the data builds upon that, and the, you know, hitting milestones and whatnot. That is just a sense of satisfaction in and of itself. As you see from the press release this morning, uh, we finished drilling and we did set casing and cemented into place yesterday. Yeah. When we were drilling, we had a newer type of rig, a lot larger. You know, we actually had 18 different areas that we saw had helium in. Yes. Everything worked perfect. The number of options and warrants that I just exercised. So you can see that I bought, in effect, another 1,320,000 shares of this company in the last 30 days. You set the bar, the standard, and the bar is set a whole lot higher for us than what is required. But that's okay. We're meeting those expectations. Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. Good morning, everyone. It's Andrew with Market Mindset. Uh, today, we're catching up with Dr. Tim Marsh, who's President, CEO, and Director at Bell Copper. It's been a little while, but there's been a lot of news. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, and, and let's get into how how's Bell Copper doing. I'm doing well, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. I think Bell Copper is doing well. We're, uh, we're doing what we told people we would do, and that's to explore for and, and hopefully discover uh, new porphyry copper deposits in Arizona. We believe we've accomplished the, the latter there. We've, we've explored, we've drilled into a new, a new copper deposit. Uh, there's copper coming out of the ground that nobody's ever seen before. Uh, we're hundreds of meters into it. Uh, it seems to have the sort of scale that the world needs right now if we're going to flip a switch and change our uh, energy supply from hydrocarbons to electricity. Perseverance is, is under option to Cordoba Minerals. That's one of Ro Robert Friedland's uh, mainly controlled companies. It's a public company, but they're, they're spending the money up there to earn an 80% interest in that project. That drill is also turning today. So uh, any, anybody investing in Bell today has exposure to two drills, each drilling what, what could turn out to be globally significant copper deposits. Yeah, and that's what makes it uh, so significant is the, is the scope and scale and potential size, and which is, as you said, we desperately need as supply and demand issues are well spoken about, especially like a place like Goldman Sachs, they're on it like every week they've got something to say about the the levels of supply and demand for copper especially in the future there have been years and years of under investment in exploration there's been cryptocurrency and cannabis and and all kinds of major distractions that don't don't do any good for society and the, the basic things that people need come out of the ground bell copper is uh, you know, in, in intent on it, finding new new sources of those metals, and the the world needs what what we're finding uh, coming out of the out of the ground in our core samples today. So walk me through. We can't because the great thing about Bell Copper and yourself is that it's it's a very technical story, and that's what a lot of uh, investors would like. They want to know, okay, you know, how competent is the team and how technical? This is very technical we're talking about. But the flip side can be reading the press release can be a bit difficult for a generalist. If they're, if they're new to the business, they look and they go, okay, uh, I think this sounds good. Uh, but the stock jumped, so it must have been good. What can you kind of say that as far as your thesis goes, uh, I guess for, for a generalist, if we can put it uh, in a way to kind of say, this is the hints that we're getting, this is the type of thing that we're looking at, and this is the next step? Really, it's not all that complicated. Uh, the, the, the story is fairly simple. If you understand rocks, it, 
it, it, it's not too hard. If you, if you understand anything, it's not hard to understand. And, and let, let me use an example. Uh, what I saw up, up in the mountains west of where we're drilling is a redwood stump, the stump of a redwood tree. Okay, redwood, redwood stumps aren't a species. Okay, if, uh, if you see a, a half of a car, you, you know, hey, it's a half of a car. It's not, uh, it's not a new thing that's being manufactured. It's a car that somebody got out with a, with a big wire saw and cut it in half and the other half went somewhere. So that really what Bell recognized that other, maybe, maybe other people didn't was things that we could see, things that other people had explored for decades weren't complete that they were half of something. And I looked at them and I said, well, this is the bottom of something and it's really big. And it's, it, it's known around the world as a porphyry copper deposit. These are the, the biggest accumulations of metal on earth that uh, when they're found, they're typically mined for many decades. Uh, the big ones in Arizona, it, the big ones in the world have been mined for a hundred years, yes. 120 years now. They really got started digging on them 120 years ago uh, after a guy figured out how to mine them on a bulk scale. And uh, so that's, that's what Bell saw. We saw it a couple of times up in the mountains, uh, the, these two different projects, Perseverance and Big Sandy. So, so there, was, there, was, there, were, there were two redwood stumps there and we knew that there had to at one time have been redwood trees because stumps aren't a thing. They start out as redwood trees, somebody cuts them down, and then there's two pieces and, and we, we saw that there were bottoms, but the parts of these deposits that should have the copper in them uh, were, were missing. And we could, see, we could see the chainsaw marks. We could see, look, somebody cut it down. This is where they cut it. They were using a chainsaw. We can see the grooves in the wood and uh, th those grooves point in a certain direction. They point off to the east, northeast. You know, I could put my finger on them. I could put my compass on them. I could, I could measure an azimuth. I could measure an inclination from the horizontal. And then I walked. And I walked out into the, into the gravel where the top should have been. Other geologists have looked at it since, since I started dragging people up there and showing them around. These are, you know, ge ge very experienced geologists from the world's biggest mining companies who need the kind of thing I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, if they want to stay in the mining business, BHP mines itself out of business every day, and and only by adding new resources through discovery do they stay in the mining business. So Bell's Bell's job, as I see it, is to make sure those guys stay in the mining business by finding new places for them to dig. Absolutely. Uh, so the, those geologists, some some of them, some of them saw it and said, "Hey." I, I like what you're thinking, Tim. Let's do a deal. Rio Tinto did that up on our Perseverance project in 2016. Uh, they said, "Yeah, we we like the idea enough to go and spend three million dollars drilling seven holes." And they and they did that. And they ran a lot of geophysics, spent a lot of time. But what, one of the questions some of these geologists would say was, "Well, Tim, how do you know it's just it's not eroded? How how do you know it just didn't weather and fall apart and now it's a pile of sand out in the bottom of the valley?" And the answer to that is. You know, Bell has spent a lot of time systematically exploring, drilling out in that valley. We've drilled that pile of sand from top to bottom. And the pieces of a porphyry copper deposit aren't in the sand. Uh -huh. uh, there, there isn't a weathered, eroded uh, pile of gravel derived from a porphyry copper deposit in that, in that significant pile of sand. So where is it? Uh, the, the easy answer is it's under the sand. So, it, yes. It dropped down a little deeper, the sand washed in on top of it, and the top of the redwood tree is down there. And if we're in the, in the lumber business, if we want to sell some, some really nice uh, rot resistant, really clean grain, strong wood, uh, we just dig a little deeper and that big old redwood log is, is down there waiting to be uh, extracted and carved up into uh, you know, 10,000 10,000 single family residences or whatever you make out of a big redwood tree. Well, we're, we're looking for things a lot bigger than redwood trees, things that, that you can't cut up in a few days in a sawmill. It takes literally decades to mine them, to extract them, to get the metal out. 
that's that's not what Bell does. Bell Bell does the finding, but once we've done the finding and can demonstrate to the big mining companies that we have the thing that they need to stay in business, uh, th th then we uh, we monetize what we've been working on for the past uh, seventeen years. It must be exciting to see. A big advancement, uh, I'm going to assume and speak for you, but the, with what's developed is that it must feel good that the thesis, you feel like, oh, no, it's coming along. It's coming along. Uh, we're seeing what we need to see. And then uh, you also, as you move forward, uh, being able to drill, you've got some cash, too, because Crestcat, who's a big uh, partner with you guys as well, has exercised their warrants to give you guys some cash as well. So you're you're good to keep going as well without having to go raise some more money necessarily. Yeah, the, the market on average doesn't appreciate technical success. I do. I do. It's where I yes. get my joy. When yeah. I see technical success, okay, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not wasting the shareholders' money uh, doing science experiments. Yeah. If I wanted to do science experiments, I, I would have uh, you know, become a professor at a university somewhere. That's not what I'm interested in doing. I'm interested in making money for shareholders, uh, making discoveries, uh, actually using my geological abilities to, to make money. That, that, that's a great thing. That's, yeah. Somebody's got to do it. I'm the guy. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the technical successes have pointed us in a direction, the direction that we pointed BS3 at Big Sandy. We drilled and we drilled and we drilled. We drilled far more gravel than I thought we would have to drill. It's an inclined hole, so we didn't come straight into the thing. We, you know, it's it's a long inclined thing. So, uh, you know, the distances are stretched out in that hole. Uh, but after 3,900 feet or uh, just shy of 1,200 meters, we hit bedrock that was pervasively, pervasively altered. The, the composition of the rock had changed to something that only a lot of hot water can do. And there were lots of uh, mineralization in the rock. We could tell this rock had been uh, just flooded with really hot water in, in the past, uh, the kind of water that leaves big, big copper deposits. The color of the staining in the rock says, hey, there's copper down there, keep the drill turning. We did for several more weeks, not knowing what we were going to find, but suspecting that we were going to find copper. And then that day came that, lo and behold, there's the copper mineral in the rock. It's the best copper mineral that we could hope for, which is calcasite. Uh, it's 80% by weight copper in those grains of calcasite in the rock. The rock doesn't run 80%, but the, the mineral that's in there that people extract and refine starts out being just 20% shy of pure copper. It's the, it's the greatest mineral you, you can find if you're looking for copper. So that's what we've got. Uh, we've, we've been in it for uh, uh, hundreds of meters now. Uh, the hole is still going and the rock hasn't changed. It's, it's homogenized. It, Everything we're drilling, it's not, it's not the walls, it's not a close hole, it's drilling through the system that we went looking for. Uh, it's of the scale that the, the biggest miners in the world are going to need. That's pretty exciting. So what, what's the next steps that you can say uh, for, for shareholders and for people who, who may have just fallen upon this just this is the first time they've heard of you? Uh, what should they be looking for next out of you guys? Uh, nothing happens fast at 5,000 feet below the surface. <laughs> but the drilling is, uh, is ongoing. It's a challenge every single day. We're going to keep drilling this same hole, BS3. It's a great hole. But no reason to stop it and try again somewhere else. We're getting what we went looking for. So we're going to keep putting it in the box, running it to the lab, getting assays. Assays are, are going to take time. The, the labs are stuffed. All kinds of people are, are putting all kinds of things in the lab, you know, a, a lithium clays and, and uh, gold and silver. And, it, you know, every, everything's hot right now and the labs are stuffed. So, you know, we're having to deal with that issue. Turnaround times are slow. Uh, we've got a good relationship with our lab here in Tucson, Arizona, at Skyline Labs, arguably the best copper assay lab in the world. Uh, Freeport McMoran used to ship their... Uh, their copper samples from the Congo all the way to Tucson, Arizona to get their copper assays. So uh, they, the Skyline Labs has got a great reputation for uh, turning out good copper assays. That's where Bell always takes its samples. Uh, but they're, they're full and it's gonna take time, but uh, shareholders can look for uh, some assay results out there in the future. Uh, it'll, you know, it'll be a, a long interval of, uh, 
of uh, copper bearing rock. Uh, we are at the same time preparing metallurgical testing just to just to tick a box. Yeah. Uh, the, the people always wonder, well, yeah, there's metal in it, but can you get it out? Uh, the answer with calcocyte is it comes out like butter. Uh, yeah. It, it's easy to extract. There are several ways to extract it. Uh, if you want to get all of it, do a good job. You use uh, froth flotation. We're doing uh, flotation testing of, of the reject, the assay reject material from BS3. That's uh, uh, getting started. Another thing we're going to do is uh, do some bottle roll tests and see if it's uh, soluble in, in acid. It should be. And that opens up an extraction method uh, in situ leaching, which you know becomes possible. I expect the the copper to be uh, very well extractable by in situ leaching. If if uh, somebody decides to use it, it won't be Bell. We're not going to go out and start in situ mining. But whoever our our customer is at Big Sandy uh, may may choose to extract the copper in that fashion. Another thing we see in the core is it doesn't have carbonate minerals. It's, it's pervasively altered to, to minerals that won't eat up acid. And, and that's another, uh, you know, another thing in favor of uh, being able to extract the copper using the acid leaching. So we're doing that just very preliminary scoping uh, metallurgical investigation to know that, yeah, the copper that we're finding will be extractable. Somebody will be able to get it someday. Uh, uh, some of the other things that we're doing is uh, getting out as far ahead as we can on on permitting additional drill sites so a, a lot of follow-up drilling will have to happen uh, the uh, the site we're drilling from now as soon as we're done with bs3 bs3 is going to reach some logical conclusion it's either going to be our our drill runs out of gas and no longer has the capability of of lifting those rods back to surface that we put down the hole or uh, uh, you know we might cross a geological boundary that says, hey, stop, stop drilling. You're you're past it, and then we'll pull back from the same pad. We'll rotate the drill 30 degrees clockwise, and we'll stab it again. Uh, at the same time, we're advancing uh, permitting archaeological and native plant studies on a site that is out over where the drill bit is now. It's it's an inclined hole that we're drilling. So we're actually drilling about a half a mile away from where the drill sits. The bit is a half a mile away from uh, you know where everybody's running around moving pipes around. Yeah, the bit's doing its work a half a mile away. So we're we're going to take the drill once we're done with BS3, rotate it 30 degrees clockwise, drill it again. Once that bit gets down into the right rocks, it's going to be 500 meters away from what we just drilled in BS3. Now that's a a really bold offset if you're if you're drilling some target out, if you're yeah. looking for a little gold vein, you don't move 500 meters and try to drill it again. If you're drilling a, a globally significant porphyry copper deposit, a 500 meter offset, yes, it's a bold offset, but if you're really drilling the, you know, something globally significant, you're gonna see it again. So there's a prediction that people can write down in their books. Tim Marsh just said, if that thing ain't there after we move 500 meters, uh, we're, we're, we got problems. What, why, why would we do something if, if, that's, if that's so bold? What, what drives our boldness? The answer is we can walk around on the redwood stone. We know it's a redwood tree. We know it's dimensions. If, if, if the thing that we're drilling is that redwood tree, we know how big it is. We know how many rings it has. We've already dated the thing. It's, it's 74.2 million years old. So, so in essence, we've counted the rings of the tree. We know a lot about that tree with that, without ever having seen it because we've, we've studied the stump so, so uh, thoroughly before finding the tree. Uh, so 500 meters compared to the stump, that's, that's a fairly modest offset, but uh, that, that's where we're going. The, one, one of the implications for our success at, at Big Sandy, because the model that we use to be successful with our BS3 hole is exactly the same model that, that we were following at Perseverance. The implication is Perseverance will be equally successful. Uh, there, there's a second redwood stump in the, in the mountain range. It's the first one that we, we, that we pursued. Cordoba is the one you know, on the drill doing the work, yep. uh, but they're pursuing exactly the same model that has yielded success at Big Sandy, 30 kilometers to the north. So lots of news from both projects. Uh, once again, we just have to keep our eyes peeled.
Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Tim March. I really appreciate you catching us up to speed. And I'm sure there's tons more work for you to get back to, never mind all the phone calls from, uh, from investors and institutional investors and whatnot behind the scenes that no one ever gets to hear about. But I'm sure you're, you're having to field a ton of phone calls and uh, and like and any of the EGOs that haven't been up that probably want to come to the site and check everything out. I wish you all the best. I'm sure it's going to be a very busy and exciting time. And thank you so much for spending a half hour with us and letting us know uh, what's happening in the development. So people getting interested about copper can look and say, wow, this is this is a story that's developing that I'm really interested in. Well, thanks for the opportunity to, to share Bill's story with your audience. Take care and have a great day.